Good evening, everyone. In accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hi, everyone. Sorry for the late start, but I promise you we'll make it up. We'll move it right along. Um, anyone here for public comment? Are there any board member reports? Well, no? Okay. Good. See? Good. We, oh, Mr. Masseri. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, we met last Tuesday at Water Sewer. So yes, sir. And uh, just identifying. Uh, the things in the pathway that we need to deal with, you're aware of the uh, chlorine distribution yes. and where that has to be located. And we were informed that we have to have that location prior to completing and filing the FEIR. Okay. And we did have an interview with the people. I'm going to ask the town administrator if we want to reveal that at this point. No, no. I don't believe so. No? Okay. We have talked to. <coughs> A location, but have uh, we're waiting for a response. Thank you. Appreciate it. Just uh, quickly, the uh, couple of things. Uh, one, I'd just like to uh, mention the passing of uh, Mr. Joe Morata, uh, who's mm -hmm. uh, Captain uh, Morata's father. And again, uh, Mr. Morata Sr. Again, was a Commodore in the uh, Coast Guard and uh, Vietnam veteran, longtime resident of the community. Obviously raised a couple of good kids who both live in town, and we're very fortunate to uh, to have uh, Captain Morata on our fire department, and so to his family, uh, our condolences. And uh, secondly, just uh, if you're not motivated to vote tomorrow, I don't know what's going to get you going. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's certainly a, a enough to uh, motivate people uh, to come out, I would hope, and I know there's a lot of a high level of frustration in the public as far as, uh, you know, participation and participating, but uh, there's an awful lot going on, even on our ballot. And again, Massachusetts, I consider ourselves somewhat fortunate where we seem to have a lot more stability than there is in Washington. But we're electing people to go down to Washington to help uh, bring back some sanity down there. And uh, I would encourage people to, uh, to go out and vote tomorrow. We have three questions on the ballot, uh, all very important. Um, I would just hope that uh, everybody would avail themselves of it. And, I know that early voting has taken place, and as of what, I guess it was last Wednesday, I guess, in the transcript, I mean, we have over 1,300, 1,400 1, people vote, so I don't know what the what the tally is now, but. It was up to 18.5%. Um, 18.5%, to that's fantastic. Uh, really so good. that's good. So I'm just happy that the participation level is up. I hope that it uh, continues to grow, and I hope a lot of people come out and exercise the very important right to vote, and uh, your vote does count. Um, I think our elected officials are listening, and we'll have to listen even more. So uh, please show up tomorrow and participate. Mr. Messier. I had the opportunity to use the early vote because I was away on the weekend in Seattle. I wasn't sure if something went wrong. I would get back here on Tuesday. Uh, I want to commend uh, Barbara Stats, our town clerk, for the effort she put in and all the other participants that she had to put together to run it. It was well done and well organized and very efficient. And to wish, I think we should thank her for that. She always does a great job, her and her staff. And they'll definitely be on stage tomorrow from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. So I hope folks go by and see them. And uh, you can thank them for their service, too. Uh, anyone else? Good. Sure. Um, I just wanted to, I had the opportunity to attend the STEAM uh, program at the high school not too long ago. It was extremely well done. Every, um, every one of the elementary schools had technician presentations, middle school, <coughs> high school well represented. So thanking everybody that was responsible for that. Um, at all of these schools, the administrator, Superintendent Bernard was there, Assistant Superintendent was there. The IT director was there. All the student um, technician assistants were there from the schools. 
And um, there were panel presentations that were excellent. Fidelity was there. And Amazon did a presentation on women in, in STEM. And actually, our own native, Rebecca Mikulski, was there to do the presentation for, with one of, was one of the presenters for Amazon. So it was pretty informative. It's pretty amazing. There's, it's 4D learning now, so they're light years ahead of what we learned in school. So um, the student presentations were excellent. So just wanted to say good job to everyone involved. Good. Well, that's it. Okay. We're going to um, skip the minutes. We're going to go to the vote the acceptance of the Charles Anderson gift for Veterans Department and Library Trustees. Mr. O'Leary. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. I move to accept gifts bequeathed by the wills of Charles, Charles A. Anderson to the Veterans Department in the amount of $150,000 and the trustees of Flint Memorial Library in the amount of $75,000. Second. second. I got a motion and a second by Mr. Masseri. Any discussion? Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> As the board members uh, know, and as uh, the public who may be following the meetings uh, know as well, um, at an earlier meeting this year, the board authorized the execution of some documentation relative to um, the uh, last will and testament of Mr. Charles Anderson. <coughs> as they've gone through um, um, closing um, Mr. Anderson's, uh, I guess, estate, um, it's come into a clearer picture what the um, what. Um, what his intentions in that will that we reviewed earlier this year mean for the town, um, and uh, it's uh, significant. Um, and and uh, as was indicated in the motion, um, there's two um, distinct gifts that he's making to the town, um, one to the Veterans Department in the amount of $150,000, and I want to thank the Veterans Director for being here this evening, and a second uh, in the amount of $75,000 for the trustees of the Flint Memorial Library. And I want to thank the library director for being here this evening as well. Um, these are very significant gifts. There's um, a number of other of community um, contributions that Mr. Anderson um, has made through his will and testament to other organizations outside uh, municipal government. Um, uh, too numerous to mention here, but uh, uh, they are also significant. And so we are certainly um, very grateful for um, Mr. Anderson for his life and for his contributions and his passing to the town. Uh, I know that um, in the case of both departments, these will allow the, uh, the departments to address the needs that maybe we're not able to address through the traditional funding mechanisms. Uh, in the case of the library, um, they have a, an ambitious strategic plan that they're working from um, that I think what we all would love to see funded fully by the town um, probably will be limited by our resources and this may be a resource to help address some of those needs. And in the case of the Veterans Department, we have a tremendous um, agent here who is able to avail our veterans of any number of different systems within and outside the traditional state system, but even all of those don't cover everything. And um, this is an opportunity for us to be able to address those needs that don't fit neatly within the traditional public service uh, benefits that are out there. Um, so um, uh, we as a town and, and those who benefit from the, both the Department of the, v the Veterans Services Department and the library stand to benefit significantly. Um, this is a substantial um, distribution payment. It says partial distribution payment, but um, as they kind of close in on the final numbers, there might be a secondary approval, but this is the substantial portion of each of these gifts. Um, and um, I want to recognize um, Reverend Hughes for his friendship um, with, um, with Mr. Anderson and, and certainly caring for his estate uh, as well. Um, and thank them all um, for their uh, contributions here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Schultz. I do have to <coughs> recuse myself on this vote. I, the Union Congregational Church received a sizable bequest, and I'm on the committee at that church that deals with um, how the church is going to deal with what they're going to receive. So. Only because I don't want to be any appearance of conflict of interest, and I want to thank Reverend Hughes, who's been the executor in this estate for you know working with everybody. And um, Mr. Anderson was a great man and left a lot of things to a lot of different people that could really use the money. So yeah, I think it should be. He certainly should be commended. Yes, he should. Thank you. Anyone else? Nothing uh, else. We'll take you know, a vote. Other extremely grateful, yes. you know, on behalf of the community to uh, to be. Remembered, you know, and uh, again for the 
two departments that are going to benefit by it. It's going to have a significant uh, impact, uh, lasting impact, and I hope in some way, somehow, we'll be able to memorialize uh, this gentleman through some sort of recognition going forward. So we'll await your recommendations. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. One abstention. Thank you. One Thank abstention. State, yes. Sorry. Four, zero, and one. Okay. Next on the Veterans Day. I think we could do this. We could pull this off. The Veterans Day proclamation. Okay. Mr. Chairman, three, we have a proclamation for Veterans Day. Um, the Veterans uh, Director is here, Ms. Magner. If you could just give us a brief description of the events scheduled for Sunday. Yes, thank you. Um, Veterans Day is on. Oh, sorry. Sue Magner, Veterans Director. Veterans Day will be held on Sunday at 11 o'clock, at 11 o'clock sharp in the morning. Um, we will have the Patriot, uh, Patriot Guard on on at the services as well. The uh, North Reading Police Honor Guard will lead us in the pledge and the national anthem. Um, the um, our, the um, children, the scouts, will all be <coughs> leading us in the pledge. The National Guard will support us with three vehicles and soldiers, which will give the children an opportunity to go in, explore, ask questions, get some education, as well as adults. Um, I did just about a half hour ago got our guest speaker finally um, Lieutenant Colonel Barrett John Barrett from town will be uh, be our honored guest speaker for Veterans Day as well we do have two proclamations not only do we have ours but um, we also have the one for World War one a proclamation that I did pull down for the bells of peace so one of the things I'm out there asking all of us is to chime in and if we could get as many bells ringing on Veterans Day. So I've already put out the word out to the fire department and putting it in the paper. I'm working with the churches as well to try to get them to ring as well. They did ask about our bell, um, so I did give them a little history on how far back it was, went and they were pretty impressed. Um, so the bell, and, Typically what we do is gonna, we usually ring it three times, but this year we'll be ringing it 21 times um, for the Bells of Peace. And then there is a proclamation that I am looking for somebody to read um, for, um, uh, on Veterans Day as well. It's not a long proclamation, it's just short pro proclamation for the Bells of Peace, a, a World War I uh, remembrance. Um, after that we do have, um, food that will be obviously refreshments over at the senior center. Everything will be taking place, like I said, up on the hill. Um, assuming the weather does not cooperate, we will um, hold the ceremonies back at the Batchelder School inside too. So I'm kind of keeping an eye on the weather forecast. It'll go on obviously the veterans website, hopefully a town website, as well as the police. And I'll put it out on the community connection in that too. So. So if it does go inside to the batch, you still will be running a bell? We will still have a bell, absolutely. So if I asked to actually, you know, put it out there, the feelers out there to yep. get the children to bring their bells, and of course they're going to have fun with that, so, um, so, so that's pretty much it. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I am going out on Sunday morning to my father. It's Veterans Day. I am going to finally spend one with him. He lives in Alabama, so uh, i got a big day of planning. Oh, good. I, so that's good. I won't be able to be there, but who's the veterans liaison right now? I'll be there. You'll be able to do the proclamation. Sure. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I move to read and sign the Veterans Day proclamation. Second. Second. A motion is second by Mr. Masseri. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So I'll, I'll read it and you get to sign it. Go ahead. So I get the tough one and you get to sign it. Jeez. <laughs> right. I'll tell you. Uh, Town of North Reading Veterans Day 2018 Proclamation. Whereas on Veterans Day, America becomes one in honoring our veterans to commemorate their legacy of honor, pride, courage, and sacrifice. America is strong because of their profound love of this great nation. We as a nation must support our veterans, for we would not be an American, an American if not for their sacrifices. And whereas 
On this day, the bells from all over North Reading will ring 21 times in recognition of the 100th anniversary to the end of World War I. Let us never forget our World War I veterans as we take time for a moment of silence in honor of, the, in honor of those brave warriors who fought and sacrificed for our freedom. Whereas on this day, we recognize and thank our Vietnam veterans for their service and sacrifice. Your wounds and scars continue to consume your lives. Many continue to suffer the effects of Agent Orange. Many lives have been shortened. Many families have to endure the pain of losing a loved one suffering the effects of Agent Orange. We will continue to stand by you and thank you for your service and sacrifice. Whereas on this day, we take time to reflect and pray for our warriors who have sacrificed the ultimate. Continue to keep them, in, them and their families in your prayers. For those warriors held captive and missing in action, many of their fate, fate still unknown, continue to pray for their safe return and peace for their loved ones. And whereas on this day, we give recognition to our Blue Star families for the sacrifices they make each day. Our Blue Star families continue to struggle day to day with their loved one away from home while striving to maintain normalcy within a family unit. They must remain supportive and strong upon their warrior's return to help them overcome the mental and physical disabilities plagued by war. And whereas on this day we remain forever grateful to our Gold Star families who have made the ultimate sacrifice. Their lives have changed forever as they carry the legacy of their loved one through their memories. Continue to keep them in your prayers. And whereas we vow to continue to educate our young through involvement and action, the importance of honor, respect, and appreciation for the valor and sacrifice of our veterans and warriors. And now therefore, let it be proclaimed by the select board of the town of North Reading that all citizens observe the 11th day of November 2018 with appropriate ceremony and prayer in honor of our veterans and warriors whose steadfast desire was and is through valor and sacrifice to preserve the principles of justice, freedom, and democracy. We encourage you to continue to display the American flag with pride on your homes, offices, and town buildings. This will be signed by Michael Prisco, Chairman of the Select Board. Thank you. If you'll pass that down. All right. Thank you very much. Susan and Sharon, thank you. Congratulations again on your uh, on those truck and the grants. Oh, uh, thank the, uh, you. Sorry, the donation, the gifts. No. I know you guys will do well with it. Uh, thank him for his service and sacrifice too. <coughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. We have an 8 o'clock informational screen there, so we're running a little bit late. So I will read um, the uh, the notice. Okay. Is it okay if we, uh, do we have to be right on time for the hearing? No. So we're okay to do the informational? I, I believe you can take them in order. Thank you. Okay. So this one here. So the first one is, where are we? This is the street name well, change. Well, street name change, yep. Uh, informational hearing, uh, street name change. The select board, formerly the Board of Selectmen, will hold an informational meeting on Monday, November 5th, 2018, at 8 p.m. in Town Hall, room 14, on a proposal to rename Bond Pell Drive as Bryan Way. Interested parties are invited to attend. Questions regarding this meeting may be directed to the town administrator's office, 978-664-6010, or via email. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Chairman, through you, um, as the board knows, we received, uh, well, this, this conversation began with the submission of a citizen's petition for the October town meeting to change the name of, uh, Brian, of uh, Bonpel Drive to Brian's Way. <coughs> Uh, the action by town meeting, which was favorable, uh, is advisory to the select board relative uh, to the naming of the uh, streets, because ultimately the authority relative to the naming of an accepted public way lies with the select board and not with town meeting. Subsequent to the approval of town meeting, we received a communication from, um, from the petitioner uh, asking that rather than naming the street Brian's Way, that it be named Brian Way without the apostrophe S. And so we have proceeded in advertising the hearing appropriately. Uh, we notified the three uh, residences on the street um, who um, would be impacted by this uh, via certified letter um, that went out um, more than a week ago. 
identifying the name change to Brian Way. Um, I've talked with the public safety professionals and with town council relative to the uh, consequence of going to Brian Way rather than to Brian's Way, and uh, there have been no obstacles or um, issues that have been identified from a legal or from a practical standpoint. Um, if anything, it may be a little more effective because there's some questions as to what the Postal Service will actually do to a name when it includes an apostrophe, because they may just delete it, in which case it may not be as clear in terms of what the name is. So um, it seems like this may be a little bit of a, of a um, in addition to expressing the wishes of the petitioner, this also might be a, a little cleaner from a standpoint of the administrative impact. <coughs> So uh, other than that, the only thing that has changed from when we were discussing this during the Warren article hearings uh, is that we have received some advice from our tax title uh, attorney, um, James Coppola, who is recommending that the petitioner, um, or, or that the impacted parties, I should say, uh, file an affidavit uh, relative to um, the name change with the registry of deeds. And that's not necessarily something that we are uh, required to require to take place, but we've been, re we've been advised by um, the attorneys to have that done so that there's a, a clean um, title in the future in the event that there is any sort of a tax title foreclosure or otherwise. Um, it, it appears to be a fairly straightforward act that would, that would take place, although I, I can't say that I know exactly what would be involved from the legal aspect of developing the documents, but we're being advised to require that as part of the approval. Um, so um, I defer to either of the attorneys on the board if they have any insight or comment. It'd be a $75 recording fee to one-page document. It's pretty straightforward. Hey, you'd yeah. add, add the vote and the test to copy of the board vote, changing the name to it, and, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, by affidavit acknowledging the name change and, um, you know, that type of thing. It's, I, I don't think it's that no, complicated. No, it's not that complicated. Okay. Just as a matter of... Oh, <laughs> Carol, you mind She's coming to the podium? That included the motion. I, I mean, I would recommend including it. Is the position of the podium something new? Or? <laughs> <laughs> no. I'll just turn this way. Uh, hi, y'all. I'm Debbie Carboni, assessing the manager. And when this petition first came about, there was a lot of research done on what the process should be, how can we protect the town. And as the two select people just stated, the affidavit is very simple. We don't want to complicate a simple thing. I would like for us to add in there also the plan date and the plan book. And the reason I say that is our community planning has accepted Bonpel Drive as our plan in town. So Bonpel Drive, although we don't need to change that plan, that reference should be in that affidavit along with the lot numbers. And it's just a matter of keeping the, the records clean when we do any kind of title search or if anyone does a, a refinance on their property. You know, 10 years from now, Brian Way is going to be the normal road. But the people that are in here today may no, no longer be here. They could be retired or whatever. And the new people are not going to know that Brian Way was once bond -held. So that's all I wanted to add was to include the plan can, can you would you be able to just give them the reference for that because it all three parts it's three parcels right they it's would have to file parcels, that yes each individual yeah. with the reference to their own deed probably and all that I actually brought it with me tonight oh, yeah, that's great. Good. Any other questions, sir? Mm -hmm. uh, do we have, uh, do we need to hear from the family or? I'm sorry? Do we need to hear from the family on this request and do we? I mean, we, we could certainly you know, poll the audience for anyone in favor or opposed to it. I think we all are well aware of the reason for the request. Mm -hmm. um, but I assume that you're all here in favor of the uh, name change. There's no one here that's not in favor of it, I assume. So, we have a motion. We have a motion that we'll need to modify it. I'm modifying it as we speak, so someone may want to Give speak. Give them a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
No, but I'm I'm glad this is getting done. Thank you for your support at town meeting. Thank you for I know it was a uh, interesting process that night, uh, but thank you for being patient and we congratulate you on your efforts to get this completed. We did get confirmation from your one of your neighbors that I know your sister's here is one of the neighbors and it was another resident and they're all on board. Right? So I think uh, the last thing we need to do is approve this and Deb, thanks again. I know you put a lot of time into this because <coughs> this isn't something we typically do too often. Well, we don't have to do it too often uh, going forward. No, but like I said, when we did the house the street, we put our last names together. Happy to have it for them. Sure. All right, I think I can probably wing it here. So, Mr. Chairman, if you're going to close the public hearing? I am going to close the informational hearing. Informational hearing, excuse me. Informational hearing. Okay. Deb, um, but before that, i got to ask Deb a question. Deb, what, what can we do for you? Could I add one more thing? The, um, the Jim Coppola did recommend that we ask the petitioner to have this recorded, the affidavit, within a 30-day time limit. That's going to be in the motion. Okay. I haven't seen the motion. Nor have I. I'm writing it now. He's writing it now. <laughs> I'll be on the fly. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> All right. All right, so, Mr. Chairman, I move to change the name of the street known as Bompel Drive to Bryan Way. And stipulate that the petitioners that the petitioners um, will record an affidavit at the Middlesex South District Registry of Deeds within 30 days of the select board approval, indicating that the name Bond Pell Drive has been changed to Bryan Way. The affidavit will contain the names and addresses of all the abutters and refer to the books and pages of the deeds in which they acquire their properties. And a copy of the board's vote uh, will be attached to the affidavit. Second. Just one affidavit by the petitioner. Okay. Yep. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Who's drafting the affidavit? So I just spoke with um, the petitioner, and uh, I believe he's consulted with uh, an attorney here in town who can assist him in that process uh, to resolve this. And hey, Mr. Um, Macario, uh, yeah, yeah. and we can communicate with him directly regarding what it needs to have. So and we need an affidavit for each parcel. Yeah, I think following along with the assessor's recommendation, yeah. right, that, I yeah. would think it would. That's be the way I understood it. Yeah. Yes. Every parcel has to have it for their own individual so title. Parcels. That's correct, each yeah. of the three. Referencing all the other parcels that are affected, too. Exactly. So. And I apologize, Mr. O'Leary. Did, mm -hmm. did, um, did your motion, which you very ably crafted, <laughs> reference to the uh, plan as well? That Ms. Um, it says, should the name and address of all the abutters and refer to the books and pages? Of the deeds in which they were acquired by properties, does the same thing about the plan and the subdivision plan as well. Is that what you mentioned, Ms. Carboni? Yes. Do you want to just copy it off of the plan? Mm, no, that's all no, right. I just, just, just said no, no. I don't think we need that. <clears throat> okay. So we have the motion. We have a yeah, We're in the discussion. But the only other thing I have is I want to make sure. How do we get the public safety updated? Make sure that section like, that's done. So we'll provide a copy of the, the board's vote through the approved motion to the public safety departments, and they'll go through the updating process, both public safety and public works. So you take um, that action? We'll provide that notification, yeah. Well, I think we'll need to. Mr. Masseri, then, Mr. Schultz. Just a question to the town administrator. Yes. The uh, Board of Public Works is responsible for putting up a new sign on the street? Yeah, correct. The, our intention is that the highway division will, will um, replace the sign with the appropriate name. Um, in, in, in conjunction with the filing of the affidavits. So. Mr. Schultz. Deb, just to confirm, the plan that you're referring to, is that the recorded plan at the registry? Yes, it is. Okay, that should be already noted within the deed reference anyway, so we'd be it, fine. It is. Yeah. 
So you don't you. No, it would be in the affidavit. It's in the actual the deed reference that you're going to refer to where they got. Yeah, but yeah. she's saying put it separately so that you do need it as a separate paragraph in the affidavit or, you know. I believe that's what Attorney Capola yeah. was advising us to that do. That makes sense so that when you're looking, you can find them all when you're doing a title run. Yeah. Because the plan would create the, the, par the parcels, yes. right? So, right. The, right. so we'll include the names and addresses of all the abutters and the subdivision plan. Yes. Correct. And the Correct. subdivision yeah. plan. Yes. And um, it refer to the books and pages of the deeds. Effective. Yes. Yeah. That'll be okay? Just yeah. How old is the property? The whole street again? Mm -hmm. Ten years? Mm -hmm. How old is it? If it's not. Yeah. Nine years. Uh, the plan was the plan was recorded uh, April of 1989. May of 89. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. So nothing else. Nothing else uh, to discuss. We can vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Next up, we have a public hearing for RMLD plan number 1956, locating pole on Turner Drive. Notice, notice a public hearing in accordance with Chapter 166, Section 22 of the Massachusetts General Laws. A public hearing will be held by the Select Board, formerly Board of Selectmen, at North Reading Town Hall, Room 14, 235 North Street, on Monday, November 5th, 2018. At 8.15, on the petition of Reading Municipal Light Department for a new pole to be located on Turner Drive as described in Reading Municipal Light Plan Number 1956, dated October 23rd, 2018. Notice has been sent to RMLD and the Butters, 10.25.18. So this is um, a petition to uh, install a new uh, utility pole on the uh, northern, I guess it would be northern, no, western, western side, western side, western yeah. side of uh, Turner, uh, Turner Drive, um, at the near the location of the intersection with Elm Street. Uh, this would be the uh, re replacement of an existing underground conduit that travels underneath Elm Street into the Turner Drive subdivision with an aerial. Uh, electrical feed that would uh, then go underground, I believe, and connect with the existing distribution system. Uh, will it cross Turner Drive above ground or underground? I mean, the, uh, it's going to go from Elm Street. Uh, first of all, good evening. Yeah. Thank you so good much evening. for the opportunity to uh, given to us. Jafari. Hamid Jafari, Director of Engineering and Operations. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, the pole, uh, basically, if you have the drawing uh, in front of you, that's yep. pole 5 over 83. Yep. That goes underground all the way to the manhole on the right, uh, across from uh, uh, to number 207, property 207. So a while ago, uh, this, uh, the underground cable that goes through the duct bank uh, failed. And uh, right now, the entire subdivision, this, the, this underground subdivision basically includes Turner Drive, Harvest Lane, Fieldstone Way uh, in the U shape. So the main feed is coming from the Elm Street going into Turner Drive underground to the manhole. And uh, the backup feed is from the Harvest Lane, again from Route 62 going to Harvest Lane. So right now, this entire subdivision, which includes 40 customers, they are fed from the backup which is from the harvest lane. That means the main line right now, it's, uh, it's out, out of service. And going through the winter, we'd like to take care of this as soon as possible. So we figured the best way to, really, to do that, which is really saving uh, ratepayers $20,000 cost differential between going across from, you know, from the, digging the Route 62. Uh, uh, we figured if we set a pole uh, on Turner Drive at the corner, going overhead and from there going underground about 40 feet to the manhole, that would be the best way to do that. And you know, it's, uh, it's clean, it, it would be easy to do and uh, uh, less uh, 
workmanship and also <coughs> obviously less cost. So basically that's what we are requesting. Mr. Chairman, through you, yes. I'll just refer to a couple of departmental reports that came in for the edification of the board and the public. Um, we received a, co a comment from the uh, town planner um, stating that the portion of Turner Drive was built um, as a subdivision in 1967, or was approved as a subdivision in 1967, which was prior to the current CPC subdivision regulations that explicitly require underground utilities, although it does have underground right. utilities. Um, however, the CPC generally prefers underground <laughs> utilities where possible. That's a comment from the town planner. Um, and then uh, there's a memorandum from the uh, town engineer to myself that I provided to you uh, with the town engineer's comments. Um, um, not opposed to the pole in the new location, as long as the existing failed conduit is appropriately abandoned and the voids um, are filled with some sort of flowable fill to prevent any further erosion in the road. Um, it is the uh, engineer, the town engineer is here, he can speak for himself, but I'll read from his uh, memorandum. Um, he would prefer uh, underground conduit be replaced uh, in kind. He, uh, he did request a breakdown of the cost differential, um, which Hamid, I think, referenced about $20,000. Yes. Um, the added cost would, um, would remove the old conduit that has failed and replace it with a new conduit. It would not also not add a wire that traverses over Route 62. Um, and the town engineer did state his concern that the existing conduit has failed and will continue to fail in the future and may cause issues under the road. <coughs> Excuse me. Mr. Masseri. A question I have is, it's the conduit that's actually failed? Yes, the conduit. What, we, what happened when the cable failed? But you're going to have to put conduit from the pole across the street anyway. No, not really. Not the, this way. Well, it's going to be across the street from Turner Drive, which is shorter run. Which is going to be above ground. You see, which is going to be above yeah, ground, I crossing. Underst I understand yeah. it's shorter, but right. you're going to end up digging the area up yeah. anyway. So why not fix right. or replace the conduit now? Well, there are lots of utilities on Route 62s, and it's really excavation. It's really very complicated. Oh, I see. You have, have to go, go across. I, you see I, that? I missed that. On That's the, right. Uh, so there are rock. lots of utilities that you know it's going to compromise, and it's going to be more costly to go deeper in order not to, and providing the support for the existing utilities. Mm -hmm. So that's what driving the cost up. And to the, f uh, to the fact that, you know, well, I, I do respect town engineer's uh, opinion about filling the conduit. The conduit is broken in few sections. So um, e everywhere else that we've done that, we've never filled the conduit. But we can revisit that to see that, you know, where possible, whatever we can do to do that. But I don't think it's going to be filled all the way through. So, because there are multiple breakdowns uh, underneath. So, uh, Mr. Minipelli. I don't think it's going to be fully possible, but we look into that. Yes, ma'am. I think we're looking at these two pictures that you, the diagrams right. that you presented. So just so I understand, you want to put the pole across the way yes. on Turner Drive. Yes. But then you want to connect the wiring from across Elm overhead. Yeah, that's going to be overhead fit from pole 83 to 83-1. Why, then from but why do you, I, I guess maybe you just answered it to Bob, but I'm still not following. Yes. Why wouldn't you just go underground? Because there are lots of underground utilities on Elm Street that to go underground, it's going to cost them no, no, the digging. No, 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 I'm saying from across the way there. Why so wouldn't you? You're putting a proposed pole right. across the street. Right. And going overhead to that. So yeah. So they're going to go from here to there. Right. Well, why is this wire connecting? That's where they no, exist. this is showing the existing. You're going to get, get rid of that. Get rid of that. We're abandoning that. What are you doing field. with this pole, though? Is that still oh, this pole, along Elm? That pole is going to have, that's a main line. That's where the main line yes, is feeding the entire road. That's not clear from this. It yeah, looks like yeah. you're putting a pole that's a standalone, right. and then you're going to cross a wire. Yes. So, so you're getting rid of the overhang from Elm to Turner. We're well, getting rid of that diagonal wire. The diagonal wire that, you know, it's dashed line, if you're going to get rid of that. Yes. It's, it's underground. It's underground. It's underground. It's going to be above ground. This is underground. It's not overhead. It's going to be above ground. Go over. Right. The dotted line is going to be abandoned. That's yeah. underground. Yes. And that's going to go overhead. To the new pole. So you put a pole on Turner, and then you have to dig across the road yeah. to get to the to underground. To Turner. Across Why the not put the pole on the right-hand side of the road? 
Well, I think it was it was easier to do it from uh, well, we could do it the other way, way too. But I think it was there was much more room uh, in order to do it this side to the left side than to the right yeah, side. Yeah, you wouldn't have to dig because up the then, road. Well, we still yeah, we're still gonna have to dig the road for that portion. I think there is not much room left on on the right side. It looks like there is a margin, there is a room. Uh, but the there's a manhole there. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a manhole, manhole right there, there that the we don't want to do, right do it right there. next oh, to. Oh, okay. That's a manhole. That? Mm -hmm. That's a manhole. So if they went there, they have to put the pole somewhere here. Yeah. There's right. not much room. So that's it. Looks to me like there's plenty of room. Mm -hmm. I get out of the radius of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, there, there is see. a sidewalk there too, right? There's a sidewalk there too. Yeah, that's right. the other thing that doesn't but show that up on here. We don't. We don't want to. Yeah. And the sidewalk, we're trying to avoid that if we can. You know. Are you proposing putting this pole in the middle of the sidewalk, like a lot of the other poles around town that really tick me off? No, this side, I don't think there is a sidewalk on that side, on the left no. side. Is it? There is I don't think so. I think it's only on the, as it's you enter it, yeah. on the right. <laughs> it's it's, it's going to be in the grass sides. area. Yeah, is there sidewalks on both sides? I'm trying to remember. There's sidewalks on both sides. Yeah, there's the sidewalks on both sides. It would be behind the sidewalk. Yeah. There's enough room there for it? In, the, in the right of way? It's not going to be in the sidewalk. No, it's not no. going to be in the sidewalk. No. There's enough room behind the sidewalk to right. put a pole, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And that, there's a, okay, have we, we spoken to any of those neighbors? They know. Was that the house that was just sold? No, it's just Turner's. No. Oh, no, okay. Good evening, John Clipfell, yeah. town engineer. I'll turn this. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I know it was bothering me. I have not spoken to either of those neighbors. There is an overhead wire going from that pole to each neighbor on the corner already existing. Um, so all you'd be doing is adding another wire going across okay. over 62 to a new pole. Putting the new pole right across in that corner, there's enough room in that right of way. And then going underground from that pole under only Turner is what I think he's trying to explain. That's We're not going under 62. Correct. Which there are utilities. I don't think it's as substantial as, you know, he makes it sound, but there's just drainage out there. We don't have any sewer in town. There may be some gas. There's gas. And there is gas, there is yeah. gas yep. yes. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, yeah. It, and it's making it really difficult. Th there's it. benefits and, you know, right. there's pros and cons to each side, right? right? Like, I don't necessarily want a trench going across 62, right. a brand new trench, but. Right. But I am concerned about the conduit under there and it potentially failing. I mean, I know it's just a four-inch conduit, right. and a lot of the voids are probably full at this point. But uh, there's been potential for it to fail in the future. So we're we gonna have our contractor to look into that, see if we can fill that. To yeah, water I mean, to just the, do the best you the can to fill the can, voids. Yep. But we can right. fill the whole way there. Yeah. The right, right no, I understand. Like 62. Whatever can be done, we'll we'll do that. So, but you're saying there's. This, that's not depicted on. Did you see this plan that was I have presented? Seen that plan, yeah. So there's yeah. no, there's nothing, there's no overhead depicted on this, like you just mentioned, other than across the street, along the, I guess we well, could call it the south you, side of Elm. They're showing you. Well, you, the that's system. the underground existing. Yeah. That, yeah. That's right. That, You're talking about there's nothing uh, showing uh, on the map. Well, yeah. Right. Because he's going under the ground. Go they're going under right. the ground. From no, here. I think. No. No, but he's it's saying it's there's already overhanging around. that exists. There's right? overhead wires from that pole on 62 that go directly to the houses. They're the electric and Comcast. All, you know, those still, are service wires. Yeah, these are not primary wires right, that feeds the right. transformer the That's entire neighbor, neighborhood. You see, you got the primaries and secondaries. So secondaries are the 120 volts that are feeding houses overhead. You just show primary. But this power. is, yeah. you're talking about 7,980 volts that it's going to be feeding the transformers that are going to convert the voltage to 122.40 for the houses that they fed underground. So this is high voltage we're talking about. The wires that the uh, town engineer is referring to is regard. Uh, uh, these are the secondary wires, so I, which I is 122.40. So I've spoken to residents right. in this neighborhood, and they right. have had their fair share of power outages. Yes. So I believe this would yes. eliminate this for that. This would do that. The next move would be to replace those transformers. That's a step number one, because this is the main feed and the backup, like what I said, it's coming from the harvest lane. Right now, it, it, they're all fed from the backup. So if that failed, it, it, the other side is also underground. 
So if that underground fails, which are the same age, my concern is that you know, it's gonna take a long time for these people to be back on power. Gotcha. So we're trying to do this as soon as possible so to avoid any future, I'm not saying that you know, it's gonna fail tomorrow, but you never know. You know. If this site has failed, it's just a matter of time before the other one does, same age. So we just like to do it as soon as we can so we go through this winter without any issues. Are there currently wires going across Route 62 now? The yes. underground is no, overhead. Not underground, yes. yeah. overhead. Overhead, yes, there are. There are. And it's just. Yes, and, the, and I'm not sure the names of the streets, but the previous street, there's a pole on the corner. Right. And then it goes back underground. And then the street before that, right. there's poles all the way right. down the street, but the side cross streets 62. that cross overhead across 62. That's right. Yes. Excuse me. There are multiple wires over 62. The story. Please. Yeah, there's, uh, Hi, Lauren Dari, Dr. Transcript. Just one question. How did um, this get to this stage of um, being this far gone um, so that it became an emergency that needs to be installed before the winter? Um, if, you know, it did just take a while to determine, <coughs> you know, what, why they were having all these power outages or? Well, yeah. you see, we have the list of underground. We, uh, when I came on board uh, four and a half years ago, I mean, part of the problem that we've been mentioning to all the towns, we, we, the, the, the maintenance record of, unfortunately, I don't want to blame anybody, but there was no, there were, there were none at all, the maintenance. So we created seven point maintenance program. One of them was these underground subdivisions that anything that it's over 25 years old, we kind of, pre uh, based on the age, we prioritize them. And we're going through those to do the complete overhaul and replacing the transformers. So we have a program, and it's just a matter of time we get to them. So, you know, some of them, they might fail sooner than the others, you know. But we're going based on the priority that, you know, we have with the age and, you know, the condition of the transformers. We have close to uh, 1,800 transformers that they need to be upgraded. I mean, we've had, uh, you know, we reduced the transformer failures, but we are not out of the woods yet. So there's only so many that we can do. We're going through all four towns, all four communities, and, uh, you know, those old age transformers, as well as the cables, we're going through the complete tra transformation and overhaul. Uh, but it's gonna take some time. So, so far we've done quite big, we're almost 30% done, but we got another 70% that it's gonna take years to, to go through. And uh, we're gonna get them done. It's just a matter of time, you know, and you know, we have time, uh, we have the, the resources, uh, limited resources in order to get them done. And then, you know, we get them in a timely manner. And that's why that, you know, uh, I'm concerned about these people uh, because of the age of the equipment. Uh, so we can upgrade them, at least get the main uh, power uh, uh, energized and get that going, fix that, and then replace the transformers. That's the next one that you know it's on the list. Actually, this is on one of those top lists for the complete overhaul, so. so. When you say concern for these people, you're talking about the people on Harvest Lane. Harvest Lane, that's right. I'm just saying, as well as just the Turner, yeah, that's right, right as, so. well, as well as the Turner Drive, you know, okay. uh, so. Have they experienced a lot of power outages? They've had some power yeah. outages, yeah. right, during yeah. the winter time, and yet, you know, there they has been. I don't remember, I think we could have, but this is the first one, I believe. Do right. you have other ones planned that you have a similar concern because of the age or the? Yes, we contacted, uh, residents and you know we set up the time for an hour outage time so we can replace the transformers yes we have as we go through these uh, you know these re replacements an upgrade yet, so we still yeah we notify the customers about you know such a date we, you're going to experience eight hours outage and then we replace them. But this one, you needed to put a new pole in. This one we needed that's to put the a pole difference. because that's a difference, because it's a main feed that it's feeding the entire area. So if the other side let go, now this is gonna take a long time. Emergency digging under Route 62 and winter time, and even if it wasn't a winter time, if we had, you know, 
uh, done it like two, three months ago that it f failed, you know, we could have, it could have still, you know, substantial uh, time and resources in order to get that done and uh, get the wires right through. So, so if you have any more concerns, questions? I know no one really loves this idea. Uh, generally speaking, I don't support Paul. <laughs> well, crossing yeah. roads, you know, yeah. when, uh, particularly if there's already something existing that's it's underground. Um, but uh, so the reason for my question was, you know, are there other wires going across already? And the answer is yes. So it's not as though we're um, littering up the sky. Littering up the sky, uh, right? So. Are we closing the public hearing? Yeah, I think, unless you have anything else, you're good? Yeah, we'll close the public hearing. Mr. Chairman, I move to grant the petition of Reading Municipal Light Department to locate one new pole on Turner Drive as shown on, in Plan 1956, dated October 23rd, 2018. A motion, do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Schultz. Any more discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Next is the Community Compact Program. Mr. Bill Burrow. So you get a sign here, apparently. Yes. Board here. Yes. Yes. Board needs a sign here. Okay. Mr. Bauer. Send it back. Michael. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Is Patrick here for, he's not here for this subject, is No, he's not, no. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is, he, is he here for the next subject? Um, I, I believe he may be, st are you staying for the update on the water meter project? Oh, I'm sorry, yes. That, so no, he, can we go to that one next? Yeah, so we can get them all? We'll come back to the community apologize. program, is that Perfect. okay? That's fine, for Mr. Chairman. So through you, Mr. Chairman, you have a copy of a memorandum from the, the Public Works Director to uh, myself uh, relative to the facilities master plan, which was approved at the October 2nd, 2017 town meeting. Uh, as I believe the board is aware, uh, we <laughs> were projecting- Page 68, excuse me, page 68 in your, um, in your book. Yes. In the online packet, 60, yeah, 60, page 68 is a memorandum. You know, so essentially, uh, we were hopeful that we would be starting this project um, right around the be, uh, beginning of the calendar year 2018. Uh, we had transitioned in the position of the Director of Public Works at that period in time. And um, have, uh, I've now come back to being at a place where we're in a position to initiate this project. And as the board knows, it's a substantial project that relates not only to our existing facilities, but to facilities that we may project that we need in the future. Um, the, the goal is to come up with a master plan that governs the use of the facilities, the location of the facilities, perhaps the size of the facilities. It's a, a more advanced um, planning effort than what we've most recently taken, where we've looked at the infrastructure needs of the facilities, the utility needs of the facilities. And I, I would um, liken it to the former uh, FUMP, which I think some of you are familiar with. Um, <laughs> yep. It's uh, it maybe a, it, it, this effort, I think, would have some of the benefit of some of the discussions that we've been having along the way, particularly relative to the intergenerational center and the impact that might have uh, on it. Um, so uh, we certainly have some more information available to us now about what we think the long-term intentions are. So the long and short of it is that, um, you know, like any other designer services type contract, this is something that you need to procure competitively for uh, qualified um, firms to provide these uh, services, which are architectural in nature. But beyond that, um, we're asking for the establishment of uh, an advisory uh, group or committee uh, to work uh, with the Department of Public Works who would take over um, the, uh, the project and administer the project on behalf of the town hall. Um, there's uh, an initial recommendation for an advisory committee that would be uh, made up of seven members with uh, representatives from the select board, the Community Planning Commission, um, Department of Public Works, uh, perhaps the Finance Committee, Capital Improvement Planning Committee, Historic District Commission because a number of the facilities fall within the Historic District in the center of town, and um, uh, also the School Committee. Um, 
based on their most recent experience with a significant construction project uh, and the planning that goes along with that. So this was kind of the initial thinking that we were looking at um, for what we might want to look at. Uh, we were not expecting um, to formally establish this this evening, so that's why you don't have a motion in it. We wanted to really start the conversation with the hope that you know, if we've missed anything here or if we've made it too large, that we could get that feedback now and perhaps bring it to the board for a final approval at the November 19th board meeting. And the goal would be to have the committee sort of up and running, ideally around the first of the year, and go through the qualifications process to get a firm underway, um, under contract, and get the project underway. Um, I think we think it's a 12-month-ish project, um, but, um, you know, it'll depend upon the work. A capital-ish or a lowercase-ish? <laughs> I'm only kidding. Lowercase. Um, I, I have to say, I, I love the idea. I, do. I like the idea of having a committee with this sort of varying uh, members. The one thing, though, when I went through it, I just felt was missing, and I want to make sure that we capture it in the analysis, the security. So when we go through the facility master plan, and we look at these facilities, current and maybe potential future ones, we don't ever really talk about security. We should reintegrate it into this practice, right? Sure. Because we could design better security <coughs> measures into our buildings going forward. And I don't think that's something we've ever done well. And I'd like to just highlight that if we could. Perhaps I'm something could be. Uh, I'm sorry. To be so go on. So perhaps something to be addressed. Perhaps a representative or community services representative from the police department or something that's like that. Why I brought it up? Because I see who you're suggesting, and I really think you need someone from, you know, it doesn't have to be the chief. He mm -hmm. certainly can allocate maybe a sergeant or somebody else that has the knowledge of construction and how buildings should have the right security measures in them. Uh, and I think that would be an important addition to this. Mm -hmm. And we can make sure that that's one of the major components that we see in our, in our, um, in our consultant, that they've done something like that, they've done a facility that, you know, is, uh, is taking that security into consideration. So we can make sure in the initial meetings that we make a point of, uh, that that's going to be one of the major focuses for the yeah, project. I, I would think that the uh, the consultant could handle that with the right qualifications, as opposed to pulling resources again. Again, we have someone from the police department, or someone from the fire department, or one, one from each. All of a sudden, it's growing. You know, and if we're going to have yeah. an outside uh, consultant with the uh, requisite skill sets, make so sure it's addressed that way. You know, as opposed to if the consultant's going to provide something, we need someone on this side to look at it and say makes sense or yeah, that's it okay. works what's with you, our yeah. operations what's, what's again I'm not saying we should pull an important resource no, but then you've got IT street. involved and you've got you know it's a whole host of it didn't even have to be someone from the police or fire it could be a retired police officer we have mm -hmm. plen plenty of them that have this great knowledge from the community that maybe we could go out and get get them to join this committee somebody that has that security knowledge yes now, Steve's not going to mention it but you would need to get IT involved too because today's security, a lot of it is centered around yep. communications and that form of technology. Yes. So one thing I could offer then, just uh, in, in what I think the intention is, which is to focus at that kind of master planning um, level for mm -hmm. the facilities, is that maybe we um, stipulate that there be a what I'll call an administrative review um, uh, before any recommendations are finalized by a working group of the departments that would be impacted in the way we're discussing here. So it could be police, fire, um, information technology, and there may be others I can't think of right now. Mm -hmm. I think our intention is to have the building division, the facilities division, represented on the committee That's right. um, in some uh, fashion um, or, or perhaps advisory to the committee. I'm not really sure how we would work that part of it out. But um, for the other things, maybe that's a way to kind of manage the size of the committee, but still get some expertise to look at these items before the plan's finalized. Right, of course, right. Yep. Um, you should have a process. I agree. So uh, that, that might be a way to achieve what, what's been described here. Good. Anything else? Anyone? So Just happy to see this get going. So it's what we would do idea. is come back to you, Mr. Chairman, uh, through the, uh, and to the board and ask the board to approve a charge for the committee. Um, and um, the membership of the committee as well, and it looks something like what you're seeing here, maybe a little bit more detail, um, and um, try to have a, a term for it as well, so that it's kind of a beginning and the end, an end date. Um, and, and I, I do want to apologize to any of the stakeholders identified here. I just did not have an opportunity to communicate with them 
So um, if any members of these committees are hearing it for the first time, um, you know, I'll take responsibility for not having the opportunity to speak with them. But the good news is we haven't made any final decisions yet. No, so if you're following along concept. at home, um, certainly contact me tomorrow and we can touch base. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Great. Powell. Thank you. you. Have a good evening. Have a good night. Thanks, Pat. Okay, we can go back to the community compact program. Thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, um, originally we were looking to put this on the agenda uh, more so just to kind of review where we're at in these community compact projects uh, and then to talk about potentially submitting for an additional project and to um, advise the board of the awarding of a project recently. Um, but uh, our, our intention changed a bit because uh, on Thursday the town planner was at a meeting we actually identified that we may have resources available to achieve one of the goals here, meaning the uh, potential um, development of um, housing for seniors on the Carpenter Drive property, um, that the Reading uh, Regional Housing Services Office may be able to provide that uh, and probably can provide that to us, um, which would be a huge benefit for an agreement we've been in for four or five years now, I think, at this point. So I'll just do a quick review uh, of what we, where we stand and then kind of where we think the next steps are. Um, so we did a, a Conquer Street sewer study, about $30,000 in best practice funding uh, in 2016 and 2017. Uh, that was completed, um, and it certainly advises the planning effort. Ultimately, we opted to go uh, with the, uh, uh, the route of Andover, but it, we do have a very solid understanding of what infrastructure is there and what the challenges are associated with the wastewater on Conquer Street through the MWRA. We did a paratransit study, which was uh, basically the precursor to our becoming uh, part of the um, um, Greater Lawrence, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Merrimack Valley Regional Transit Authority. Um, so that certainly was one that worked out favorably for us. And I, again, I want to highlight um, Representative Brad Jones' uh, effort legislatively to kind of get us attuned to what opportunities might be there and any support for that option being made available to us. Uh, we have an ongoing park and ride uh, feasibility study um, from best practice funding um, that we look to have completed in uh, 2019. The study is underway and exploring possible costs, ridership, locations, and routes for a new shuttle service from North Reading to commuter rail stations in other communities. And then the most recently awarded uh, grant in the amount of $85,000 toward a total project of $102,405 for uh, e-permitting software, electronic permitting software. Um, this would include setup uh, and training to establish the system, which would allow the town to modernize its permitting system, which is largely paper-based, um, routing uh, uh, and uh, review taking place manually to something that would be more streamlined here in the town hall and beyond. Um, the goal being to improve customer service, uh, increase the speed that we can move through permits, particularly building permits, um, and uh, improve our efficiency as well. Uh, and we're looking for this to interface with Munis as well from a fee collection standpoint. So this is a significant project for us, it, uh, and it, it's certainly something that I know has been on my radar since my first uh, year here. And uh, we're, we're pleased to be at a point where we have the, um, the expertise and the information technology department that's, willing, that's able to assist us. Um, the, um, the commitment in the building department uh, through the uh, building inspector, um, and now uh, the funding available through uh, the state. And uh, I want to re recognize uh, Representative Jones for his advocacy for this project. Um, this is something that will, you know, affect people in a very real way in the way they conduct business interacting with Town Hall, um, uh, most significantly for building permits, which uh, are pulled from everybody from large contractors and huge developers all the way down to individual homeowners who are making improvements on their homes. And really having this available, we get, um, we get efficiency in the operation of the town hall, efficiency for the resident, being able to get information online, be able to submit information electronically. But we also get in increased safety because now um, there's an, uh, an easier way to um, uh, access the uh, building code through the building department. We, we're able to, to better guarantee but, or better provide um, oversight for work that's being done here in the community. And that benefits everybody. So um, that last piece that I was mentioning was uh, you know, where do we stand in terms of uh, any other decisions to make on this? Um, we had had some conversation about a facilities um, uh, request and looking at consolidated uh, facilities uh, management between the school department and the town. Um, that happened uh, and was discussed in the late part of 2017 and unfortunately uh, due to the transition to DPW, uh, it's not a project that we've been able to uh, undertake. So that project has been at sort of uh, on hold at this point in time and will probably remain there for some period, although we may be back looking to try to couple it with the facilities master plan to see where there might be some, um, some synergy between those two projects. 
And then this Carpenter Drive project, which I would suggest the board have a discussion uh, regarding uh, at a future um, board meeting. Um, it, it looks like we have the expertise there to facilitate the development of a request for proposals for the development of that property um, through the Housing Services Office and obviously uh, with uh, input um, from our own uh, local housing experts in the Housing Authority. But it doesn't look like we'll need to apply for grant funding in order to achieve it. Um, so our recommendation is to uh, not proceed with that at this point in time. Um, uh, but I would suggest that the board have a further discussion about Carpenter Drive just to make sure that we're kind of all understand what the outcome is supposed to be in the project so that we can, um, that we'll be satisfied at, the, at its completion. Um, and we can talk, Mr. Chairman, about when that might be. Well, I think we're meeting for the strategic plan this week, and I think we should have that discussion there. <coughs> Excuse me. Sure. I think that's probably where it needs to be. Excellent. Um, so that's the update. Again, I, I want to thank the board. Um, this uh, last project for which we were awarded, it happened very quickly. Um, the grant round was open for a um, pretty brief period of time, and I, I just want to recognize the efforts of um, the town planner, Danielle McKnight, and uh, building inspector, um, uh, Jerry no uh, Noel, who worked um, quick quickly and closely with a number of other departments, both inspectional services related and financial uh, related, um, to pull together the application. So uh, we're fortunate that have another resource available to us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any questions? Well, you know, I'm a big fan of the community compacts. I think there's so many great best practices throughout the Commonwealth. <coughs> and we could take advantage of this program more and more. Oh, big fan. So thank you, and please thank Mrs. McKnight and uh, the building inspector for their efforts. Okay. We can go to legal bills. And then we'll go back to minutes. Then we'll go back to minutes. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve legal bills for September 2018 in the amount of $6,579.81 <coughs> as follows. Copeland and Page, PC General, $3,368.81. Copeland and Page, PC Labor, $3,211. Total $6,579.81. Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. Masseri. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Mr. Masseri. I skipped over minutes. Already. Yeah, we're going back to those now, right now. All right. So, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the October 1st, 2018 regular session minutes as written. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? And heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Today is the fifth, right? 11 5. Executive session? Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the October 1st, 2018 executive session minutes as written. Second. Second by Mr. Masseri. Any discussion? I heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. October 15th, regular session. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the October 15th, 2018, regular session minutes as written. No. Second? Second. Second by Mr. Masseri. Any discussion? Not heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. Executive session. Chairman, I move to approve the October 15th executive session minutes as written. Second. Yeah, motion and second by Mr. Masseri. Any more discussion? Not heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Okay. Town Administrator's report. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, as I referenced earlier, I have a standard town administrator's report that was put in the meeting packet, and then I had a supplemental report with a series of things that kind of bubbled up uh, over the past few days that I think are of importance to the community. So I ask your indulgence while I try to move quickly through the comments. First, uh, the town was asked to submit an initial damage assessment report regarding the mutual aid that we provided for the Merrimack Valley Natural Gas Emergency. And more for your information at this point, we did submit costs, and they totaled $12,000 to the state um, for our response. 
Um, again, we're complying with a request from the state to provide us information, and that's part of the process they, they go through in terms of determining the damage level and whether we qualify for any sort of funding. Um, you know, and certainly we appreciate the recognition that, uh, you know, while well, certainly the disaster occurred in three communities to our north, um, the impact was felt you know, far beyond that. Um, so uh, I want to thank the Public Safety Director for his effort, uh, along with the Finance Director, to compile that. Second, uh, I'm pleased to announce that the Police Department has hired Laura Miranda to the new position of Mental Health Substance Abuse Clinician, um, as was funded in the fiscal year 2019 budget. Um, I included a copy of the report from the Human Resources Director, but uh, uh, we're very pleased to have the position uh, be created and to have um, Laura on board. Uh, she has a Master of Arts in Clinical Health Counseling from Lesley University and a Bachelor of, of Arts in Psychology from the University of Massachusetts Amherst. She's a licensed mental health counselor and will provide st strategic support to the community. Um, and uh, we're certainly glad to have her on board to uh, address the needs that were so well articulated by the police department during the budget process. And I just want to thank the board for its commitment to this, um, to trying to see this through and for, for really prioritizing it through the budget process. And I'm pleased that we were able to hire ambitiously as well and find the right person um, quickly as well. Just coincidental that it's Miranda, like Miranda writes and things like that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we also should thank the community, Michael, too, because they came out and voted in favor of the yeah. budget. We had this in it, and I think it's important the community knows that this is why you go to these our town meetings. You, you participate in these discussions and, and approve these budgets because it has very important stuff in there like this. This is very good for the community. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm delighted she's on board. I look forward to seeing her around the community. Yep. Um, thirdly, in response to increased requests for plumbing and gas inspections and limitations on the availability of staffing for these inspections, the building department is seeking to hire a second part-time slash on-call assistant plumbing and gas inspector this fall. Position has been advertised and a decision will be made later this week. Position uh, would largely be funded by the 102-104 Lowell Road revolving account, although um, the exception to that would be any non pulte inspections that are uh, conducted by this uh, individual. Um, they would be funded out of the building department budget and the line item that's in there for, um, for additional inspections. So um, the reason I'm highlighting this uh, is because uh, we generally have historically operated with one primary and a secondary uh, inspector, but we're finding that we need additional resources uh, at this point in time, and uh, I do think it's prudent for us to, to go forward with it. And, and I do want to note, too, that I, I think that we can expect to see a, additional requests as we go through the fiscal year 2020 process from the building department that we're going to need to evaluate uh, based on not just the Pulte project, but a general uptick in activity, construction activity here in town for a variety of reasons. So I just kind of note that that's something that's on the horizon that we're certainly talking about. And I want to recognize all the staff in the department for their efforts to keep up with it. Um, you know, it's quite a bit, quite a busy construction season this year, and I know they've been very busy. Um, so I want to thank you know, Jerry uh, and Kathy, and then um, the assistant inspectors as well for their uh, assistance. Just uh, how how are we being impacted as far as the now state DPU imposed uh, moratorium on National Grid? Are we aware of? Uh, I mean, CBS looks pretty good, pretty far along, and uh, I don't know how what other projects have subdivisions so the pro we talked about before it was supposed to provide us an update right national grid so the um the there been there's been a significant amount of applications for permits for on-site natural gas storage so a number of the developments that are taking place uh, folks are uh, making accommodations for propane heat um, that's happening in a number of places and that includes at pulte and the development there um, they're preparing and i think uh, some of you are aware that they have closings that are projected to turn over I think next month mm -hmm. um, so they're making accommodations within within what they're allowed to do to have temporary gas um, service um, provided to their um, to their facilities until they can connect I, I think connect long term again I'd leave that decision to them um, so you know in terms of the work in town um, I have not heard of any um, any direct impact. I know they were here looking for street opening permits for some work uh, in the late part of the summer. Um, how much of that work they completed before the moratorium, I honestly don't, I don't have that information um, in front of me right now. So as far as these temporary permits for um, well, bottle gas, I guess, yeah. uh, I know the fire chief had expressed some concerns in relation to having those take place. So that it, where are we? 
I, I think that they're not preferred, and I don't want to speak for the chief, but um, you know, I, I think that um, it, the concern was aimed at what was the size, how much would be stored, and would we be getting the um, the customary request for the board to have to approve a significant magnitude volume and so far that hasn't happened but um, uh, you know based on what I'm hearing I think it's it's a, just a matter of time before someone is before us looking to store a large amount of gas um, in, a, in one particular location I think the, the phase construction um, this is my opinion um, I can't say that I spoke with anybody but the phase to the construction of um, Pulte is probably keeping the quantity that they need to, to have available now down underneath those thresholds but they're they're falling into a more standard um, approval process than they would otherwise. If they were looking to supply, you know, nine buildings worth of gas, you'd be talking about much bigger tanks, more of them. I, I think if we could, uh, you know, as an administration, you know, track it a little bit, mm -hmm. report it to National and again, have you met with National Grid? We did, um, which I, I'm, I'm happy to try to provide an update. Okay, on. but we need to communicate with them. Obviously, it's impacting, you know, development of the community, and they need to settle mm -hmm. with these this group of people and uh, I just think we need to keep the pre public pressure on them uh, public awareness out there and uh, you know and I hope the legislature I know they're gonna have a public hearing uh, on a piece of legislation to uh, try and force them to bring these people back uh, yeah, that's good you know, that's a good thing but uh, you know the more we as a board as an administration uh, highlight it you know hopefully they can come to some sort of a uh, resolution between the union and, uh, and the workers and national grid but so you did have a meeting with them. we did yes um, so we met with officials from national grid we provided them the resolution uh, that was approved by the board back in I guess September or maybe early October um, with regard to um, the, the situation and really the things that that we were really highlighting to them were obviously the, that the, the board wants to see the work that the labor dispute settled um, you know that's obviously one of the concerns but then there were also the very pertinent safety concerns relative to North Reading and there were two components of that the one was uh, their emergency response plan which they provided to us in advance of the meeting and then um, did some cursory level of review um, in a meeting as well so we do have their emergency response plan and the second was related to um, the uh, infrastructure here in town and um, while they did review with us um, information relative to <coughs> excuse me the natural gas distribution system here in town and the location uh, of properties that are serviced by gas um, we s stated to them that we felt we you know we were looking for more we wanted to know where the exact facilities were and we've heard a lot about these different um, pieces of equipment within the distribution system that um, apparently had some sort of uh, involvement or potential impact in what took place to our to our north or may have had some sort of involvement um, so we expressed to them that we needed to see uh, that further detail. Um, they committed to take that back to their um, uh, senior officials at National Grid um, in order to uh, see how we could be provided that. They expressed concern relative to um, the Homeland Security related issues with the disclosure of the information and you know, we said we were fully prepared to guarantee the confidentiality of the agreement but that the appropriate public safety people needed to see it. Um, so. Uh, we relayed that to them. They did commit to take that back. Um, you know, in terms of what we saw, um, you know, they addressed some, but not all of what we wanted to see from a public safety standpoint. They've uh, scheduled a larger uh, natural gas um, uh, meeting for, uh, I believe, next week, which the Public Safety Public Works Director uh, and I plan to attend, uh, at which we plan to, to really push that point home, that we need, um, we, we need to have that information on hand. Um, Is this just internally here or a larger meeting no it's a larger meeting it's addressing a number of communities uh, here and, and our our intention would be to, to do that in a coordinated fashion um, for other communities I, I believe that that's going to be the point where we're going to be able to address uh, effectively that it's not just us that's impacted by this um, you know they reviewed how our system works too which was certainly very you know beneficial to us um, yeah, yeah we um, we, uh, I think we felt, you know, that we have a, a pretty static system in terms of uh, c compared to some of the more complex systems to our north. Um, and uh, they, I guess, identified that that's uh, made it a, a more streamlined um, uh, system to operate. Um, but, um, you know, what we really wanted to have in hand is, you know, besides the pipes, 
where are the facilities that we need to be uh, aware of as well here in town and how does the system actually work relative to um, the region uh, no it's not connected to uh, Andover and the Columbia gas distribution system but we are connected to at least one community um, through town border and we need more information on that um, so I think I've captured kind of everything with regard to what that meeting took place um, and it, it's certainly I, I think they walked out knowing it was not the last community conversation that we would be having um, and, and candidly if we're you know not satisfied with the response that we get in our next interaction with them um, you know, we may want to further evaluate what our options are. Mr. Messier. I'm assuming that the apartments have a gas main going up to them. Is that correct? They are uh, able to be serviced by natural gas. Um, I, I able, but they're not? Not right now. <laughs> no, well, no. I mean, the Pulte condominiums or townhouses. I'm talking about Pulte. I'm talking about the apartments. Um, I don't have the map in front of me, but I believe they're serviced by natural. So there is a main close by. There is. Yeah, that was my point. It's close by. Okay. Now I but, understand the other issue. But they're not able to connect to it. And, and so Pulte is proposing to put in gas tanks in the immediate. Uh, they've sought permitting for their first building to be yeah. serviced. Um, I, I say temp I say temporarily, but I, I don't with know. One building, right? Correct. Well, there's two under construction, but there's one that's close to occupancy. Yeah. Uh, one's going to be closing in December, I think. Occupying in December. Correct. One yeah. building in yeah. December. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I have people in there by Christmas. Well, so. Now, when you switch from natural gas to propane, you end up having to change the nozzles and aspects of the heating system. So. Okay. Anything else? I, I have. Yeah, additional Please items. Um, that wasn't on there. <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't. Um, <laughs> although perhaps it should have been. Um, <clears throat> uh, I attached a copy of a report from the police chief regarding the number of vehicles at the uh, two remaining Class Two dealerships here in town. I think that you, know, you, saw, you see from the report that they both were within the numbers that they required to be at, which we certainly were pleased to see um, uh, in terms of those two establishments. <clears throat> Uh, the 2018 employee uh, recognition luncheon will be held on Friday, November 16th at 12 o'clock noon. To accommodate this event, the town hall and the senior center will close at 12 o'clock noon for the day on those days. And the Flint Memorial Library will be closed from 12 to 1.30 on those days as well. And I attached a copy of the notice that was sent to employees uh, relative to this event. Mr. Chairman, I spoke with you. I know, I believe you said you were able to attend, which we certainly greatly appreciate. Um, all of the board members are welcome to attend the event. Uh, it's a luncheon-based event. Um, runs roughly 60 to 90 minutes um, at the Hillview, no, November 16th. Uh, and then the, from my supplemental report that was added this afternoon, uh, Senator Tarr's office forwarded uh, my office information regarding the recently opened Registry of Motor Vehicle Service Center in Danvers. Uh, it's another place where folks in town, particularly those who might live on the eastern side of town, can access RMV services. It's located at 8 Newbury Street on Route 1 in Danvers, and it's open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. The Parks and Recreation Department reminds residents that with the end of the outdoor athletic season, certain facilities will be closed. Um, the restrooms at the Upsa River Park were being winterized today, with only portable toilets to remain, um, with them being removed on December 1st. I, just, I state that just for folks who might access during the late part of the season. And the Kenny Field restroom concession facility will also be winterized, we believe, at some point uh, next week, uh, with the uh, uh, Thanksgiving football game not being uh, in town, being in Linfield this year, and the last permitted uh, event otherwise being this weekend at the facility. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the water meter replacement project continues. Approximately 75% of the meters have been replaced, and it's estimated that about five weeks of work remain on the project. Shortly thereafter, the quarterly meter reading fee of $50 would be implemented. So I think we're looking somewhere in, in January-ish, depending upon when the next read falls. Um, there was some discussion at the June water rate hearing about whether we would want to move to a more frequent reading of the meters. If we're going to, to do that, I would suggest that we uh, schedule a discussion. Um, again, I think right now the intention is to continue with the quarterly bill, uh, billing, and that's the recommendation of the department. Um, we could look either at um, more frequent billing or a, an adjustment to the fee if the board was so inclined. Um, again, the fee is? $50 per read. So $200 per year. For those who don't have the? Correct. And that's ones are going to read daily, correct? Th they can read on demand, okay. correct. Um, so I just note that. Um, 
we mentioned early voting, and uh, I know that uh, some board members made comments earlier, but I just, you know, by way of my own comments, um, it took place over the past two weeks, and I, I again want to reiterate and, and commend, uh, re reiterate the earlier comments and commend Town Clerk Barbara Statz, along with Janet Murphy and Carol DeCrow in her office, as well as the many election workers who assisted over the past two weeks. <coughs> Some of you, I think, saw firsthand at times the town hall was very busy uh, with voting activity, particularly on the extended hours days on the two Tuesdays that took place and the last two days, uh, Thursday and Friday of last week. Um, very busy in a very short amount of time, and uh, you know, I want to recognize um, the public for participating, uh, for their patience, maybe with any parking limitations and the cooperation with staff here in Town Hall as well to um, accommodate the regular influx of folks. Um, we even saw 160 voters on a wind and rain driven Saturday, October 27th, so not this past Saturday, but the Saturday before, over a four hour stretch, which was pretty remarkable given the, the weather conditions in town that day. Um, and then finally, a total of 2,078 voters or 18 and a half percent uh, of the town's voters voted early so um, you know it certainly uh, seemed to work very well again as this was noted earlier election day is tomorrow from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, at St. Teresa's on uh, Winter Street and that concludes my comments thank you mr. chairman any old new business <coughs> all set Sir. Just an update on the water. We have the next uh, water wastewater meeting scheduled for the 28th of uh, November. And uh, in, in, the, in between, we continue to identify the appropriate property for establishing the chlorine system on Route 28 on that line. Congress, uh, not con yeah. Not accomplished. Central Street is not an area. Good. Good. Anything else? Good. Good. So we have the strategic, the strategic planning meeting this week on uh, Thursday, right? Correct. Yes. Um, where is it at? Where are we going? It's back. I believe at we settled the police station. Police station. And I will bring the food. Do we have any food allergies, right? Or did you, or did you already make the? Food? Nope. We did not made any final plans. Was that? Not made any final plans on food. Okay. So, so that would be appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. No, I'll, I'll do it. Those cookies. And the cookies. <laughs> yeah. I'll make a note of it. <laughs> but we don't have any food allergy. And Mike, it's going to be just uh, right now we plan five of us. Six um, of us. Yeah, uh, six of us. Um, and there was one other person. You told me you didn't need me. No, we don't. We I don't. never Andy's said Andy's got a scribe this year. We're I gonna never said it that way. And yeah, um, I'm going to retire and we'll turn it over to Andy. You're a good amazing, typer, right? The amazing Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, I think we usually uh, uh, plan for food for seven to accommodate the local media. Oh, I'm sorry, to accommodate what? Uh, usually we provide food for. So oh yeah, yeah. You're not no, I'm, I'm oh, you told me you were tied up. Yes, you're going to Hamilton. Yes, you're going That's to right. Hamilton. You told me that already. So it's a great show. Get fed I went. Oh, yeah, you don't need it. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You giving up the strategic planning for Hamilton? Unbelievable. Tactical. Good for you. We'll follow so six up people. We'll yes. Follow. And then we're starting at. I think we said six p.m. with uh, for dinner, and then six thirty for the meeting itself. Great right. thought. Yeah. Well, we usually work while we eat. Yes, Mr. Pissarro. Last year we didn't do the SWAT. We ran out of time. Are we gonna? Are we gonna allow time to get through the whole process, or are we gonna? So, what would what my goal would be to to start with the SWAT, the, the SWAT this time, go through it quickly, try to update the strengths, the weaknesses, so on and so forth, and then. then go back into the objectives based on that discussion. Mm -hmm. I think we all have been around long enough. I think we have a good handle on what those are. So hopefully we can get through that process in about an hour, and then at least the rest of the discussion about talking about what's coming off the objectives, what we want to move into our mm -hmm. progress assessment. You know, there's some stuff that we've, we've done, but we're not 100% there, but we should have another discussion about the water and where do you think we should put that? Does that belong in the progress assessment? We complete that and then go into the objectives, update those and add some or maybe even take some away. Try to do that again within another hour. So I, where I was guessing, I would say 10, 10.30 would be out of there. But I think it's the 
The facility's open 24-7, so we're okay. True. And we're safe. That's what we think <laughs> Okay. Um, if, and I don't have anything else except for... Executive session, right? The, yep. Just make sure, again, reiterate the voting. Um, and uh, Senior Citizen Thanksgiving dinner is also coming up. That's the correct. Two Sundays. The two Sundays, the 21st. I want to say. Yes. Right. Sunday of Thanksgiving week, right? Yes. It might be, actually, yeah. And, and to all the veterans, Veterans Day is on the 11th. Thank you for your service. Yep. Yep. Okay. So I'll take a motion to enter back into executive session. Mr. Chairman, I move to enter into executive session for the purposes of exemptions three, collective bargaining, and six, real property. Uh, such discussions at open session will have a detrimental impact on the town. And the board of select, further, the board of selectmen will. Return to open session for the purposes of adjournment only. Second. Motion and second. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Masseri. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mr. Minupelli. Aye. And the chair votes aye.